Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Welcome to the fifth Sunday of Easter. My name is Peggy Lowe and I'm the rector here. Uh, welcome to St. Albans. Uh, so a couple of announcements. So just a reminder, Vacation Bible School this year runs from May 31st to June 3rd. So um, if you know somebody, a kid who wants to come, please sign them up. If you want to volunteer, also please sign up. You can find uh, the links online. Also, uh, we're having a Pentecost potluck on June 5th uh, when the bishop comes here for confirmation. So please bring, we'll have um, the Brotherhood of St. Andrew is gonna smoke some meat and so just bring your favorite sides to share. And lastly, the youth group is making breakfast tacos right now. If you walk into the PLC, you can smell all kinds of wonderful things. Um, and so they'll be selling breakfast tacos after the service uh, as a fundraising for their mission trip to Galveston. Uh, so happy to see you all here. Let us pray together the hospitality blessing found on your card. It should be in front of you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, living within us, guide our hearts and minds as we welcome today all those who worship with us at St. Albans. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcomed in the spirit of your love. Help us to recognize each person as an individual sent by you who will enrich our lives. And most of all, O oh God, let this be a place of love and acceptance of all of your children. In the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The opening hymn is hymn 390.
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the book of Acts. Now the apostles and believers who were in Judea heard, the, heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me. And when we entered the man's house, he told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit 
fell upon, it, fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced. And they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. The psalm assigned for today is Psalm 148. We will pray this responsively by whole verse. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all the deeps. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning, crying, and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord.
Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So last week, I compared preaching every Sunday to following a TV show I can't binge watch. Every week, I'm eager to see what the new episode brings, except that I'm the person who has to write it. So previously on this season of the 50 Days of Easter, in the first episode, we proclaimed the resurrection. The next Sunday, we wrestled with our doubts about the resurrection and with the relationship between doubt and faith. Then the th resurrection of Jesus was made more present and real to us through the breaking of bread and the sharing of fish. Last week, we turned our focus from the resurrection itself to our response to the resurrected Jesus. We contemplated how we might pick out the voice of our shepherd from among all the voices surrounding us so that we can follow where our shepherd leads. This Sunday, we continue in that same direction. At the beginning of this service, we prayed that we may steadfastly follow the steps of Jesus in the way that leads to eternal life. This leads to the question, what are we praying for when we make this our prayer? Today's reading from the book of Revelation tells us we are praying for the holy city, the new Jerusalem, to come down out of heaven. Whether or not we realize it, this is what we pray for every time we say the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, as it is in heaven. This isn't so much about instant gratification as it is about transformation. When Jesus carried out his ministry, he didn't tell those who were sick that he would pray for their healing. He healed them. He didn't pray for demons to leave those who were possessed. He cast out the demons. He didn't pray for the hungry to be fed. He made sure that they had fish and loaves of bread. He was all about transforming this world, making a concrete difference for people in this lifetime. On Tuesday, I spent some time with the youth and their mentors preparing for confirmation. The topic we discussed was prayer. I asked them how they prayed. They said through painting and drawing, sewing and knitting and crocheting, walking the labyrinth, reading, prayer beads, zen tangles, 
and serving together. Next month, they will be going on a mission trip to Galveston. That too is a work of prayer. And you can join your prayer to theirs by buying some breakfast tacos after this service. <laughs> and after we talked about how they prayed, we turned to the back of the Book of Common Prayer. On page 856 of the Catechism, if you want to follow along, the section that outlines the Catechism is the, se the section that outlines the foundational beliefs are, of our faith. And in that section, we are told prayer is responding to God by thoughts and by deeds, with or without words. I'll say that again. Prayer is responding to God by thoughts and by deeds, with or without words. During the 50 days of Easter, we are reminded that we are called to respond to God. In response to God resurrecting the Son of God, who is also the Son of Mary, we walk in the steps of Jesus so that we may follow him out of the tomb and into new life. Today, the book of Revelation reminds us that the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with us as our God. We will be God's peoples and God will be with us. God will wipe every tear from our eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more for the first things have passed away. This is what it looks like when the kingdom of God is on earth as it is in heaven. This is what our world can look like when we respond to these words of God by thoughts and by deeds, with or without words. Reading these verses this week, my mind immediately went to the community of hope. I feel like the chapter here at St. Albans has made these verses their prayer. When someone makes a prayer request through the community hope, an email goes out to the group, and what follows is this email chain of cascading prayers. They make meals, feeding bodies and souls. They bring the presence of God and the love of this community to those who cannot be present with us. Members often make visits in groups of two recalling that when two or three of us are gathered together in the name of God's well-beloved Son, God will be in our midst. I believe they make God more present and more real for people who might be keenly feeling the absence of God. Though they can't prevent death or take away the life events that cause mourning and crying and pain, it is through the hands of those commissioned to undertake this work that God wipes away every tear. These verses were also made more alive to me during yesterday's vestry retreat. As part of the retreat, we talked about the things that went well during the pandemic. Parking lot church, the pictures of parishioners holding up candles for Christmas, the phone calls and postcards, the strengthened sense of fellowship, that we're all in this together and that we can lean on one another changing expectations of sticking exactly to tradition and becoming more flexible, evolving the way things are done. Zoom formation, Zoom everything. Sustaining our music programs and continuing to engage youth. People stepped up and reached out and fostered the sense of fellowship and family and community. The beauty of coming in from the outside is that I get to ask a lot of questions and listen to a lot of stories. I get to point out all the ways that this parish has been following in the steps of Jesus throughout the pandemic and draw connections between them. As our presiding bishop, Michael Curry says, the way of Jesus is loving, liberating, and life-giving. You have one more week. Come on, we can do this. <laughs> Only been preaching it for the last four weeks. Um, there was a foundation of love that existed here before the pandemic. And you all built on it by liberating one another from the prison of loneliness and pain throughout these last years. 
by finding a way to take worship online, by praying for and with one another through thought and deed, with and without words, you have brought life and light into a period of time filled with darkness and death. Death and separation and division never has the last word, not when we continue to love, not when we continue to pray by responding to God with our whole heart, our whole mind, and our whole strength. When we pray to steadfastly follow the steps of Jesus in the way that leads to eternal life, we pray to transform the world, starting with ourselves and our relationships to one another in this world. In the Gospel according to John, Jesus gives us what I consider to be the third great commandment, to love one another as he loved us. Loving each other as Jesus loved us is a much higher bar than loving our neighbors as ourselves. In the book of Acts, Peter was reminded that what God has made clean, we must not call profane. And so as we recognize and call forth the image of God in ourselves and in one another, we make more present and real the presence of God in this world. The more this happens, the more we will feel like we are living in the kingdom of heaven. As the season of Easter comes, a comes to a close in these next week, and I can't believe it's already the middle of May, can you? St. Albans will enter a phase of restart, reset, renewal. Whatever we choose to call it, it is about building on the strength of our love and prayer. It is, it is about honoring and giving thanks for what has come before during the pandemic and long before that. It is about extending and expanding the sense of connection and love to those who still don't quite feel like they belong and to those who aren't here yet. And even though, that I, am, even though I am writing and preaching these sermons, this is not my story alone. And I can't wait to see where we go as a parish, as a community, as a family, and I invite all of you to pray for this next stage with your thought and deeds, with or without words. Amen. Now let us reaffirm our faith with the ancient words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 6, may be found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer.
in peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, this nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and God's church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. Mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Pray for those who died in the shooting in Buffalo. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy on us, most, most merciful, merciful Father. Father. In, In your, your compassion, compassion forgive, forgive us, us our, our sins, sins known, known and, and unknown, unknown things, things done and left undone. undone. And, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the, to the honor and glory of your name, through, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace be with you. Please be seated. So let's see, are there folks celebrating their birthdays, anniversaries, or baptismal anniversaries? Come on up. Birthday, great. Got a couple of couples. anniversary. So let us pray together first the birthday blessing. Watch over your child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever they, she may be. Strengthen her where she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise her up when they fall. And in her heart may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Now let us pray together the anniversary blessing. O gracious and ever-living God, look mercifully on these your servants. Grant them your blessing and assist them with your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep their promises and vows. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Happy anniversary. 
So just a reminder for communion, if you are coming up for regular wafers, hold your hand out like this. If you need gluten-free wafers, cover your hand like this. And if you'd like to come up for a blessing, uh, just simply cross your arms across your chest. Uh, and lastly, we're still doing um, intinction, so please don't try to drink out, out of the chalice. And thank you for your support of the ministries at St. Albans. And so now, but do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Eucharistic Prayer D, which is found on page 372. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing
acclaim you, holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs and matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with St. Alban and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our kingdom, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
let us pray together the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before I give the final blessing, I would just want to remind you again that there are breakfast tacos for sale by the youth in the uh, PLC uh, right after the service. There's also a godly play for the kids and adult education today will be an instructed Eucharist. So we're going to walk through the steps of the Eucharist and talk about why we say and pray what we do and when. So may Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the eternal majesty, the incarnate word, and the abiding spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The recessional hymn today is Hymn 580.